to finish off the, the compression chapter after a long go, I know, let's have a look at how you can invert the BWT. I've shown you how to compute it. We've seen how to efficiently compute it. And I gave you some intuition, this grouping by context, uh, why, it, why it makes compression effective. But from the definition, it's not at all clear that you can decode it at all, because after all, you sort it. Normally, if you sort a list of things, then the original order is lost. And in particular, had I chosen this, the first column of this matrix, then I wouldn't be able to invert it. The first column is just all the characters in sorted order. Once I've done that, I have no way to go back to the original text. But the BWT can be inverted. Um, and that's, that's a, a remarkable property. Before we discuss how this works, I'll just show you the algorithm. Um, I'll, I'll show you on an example how it works. And here's spelled out a bit more uh, cleanly how to do it. So we have an example. That's the BWT. Now I write down the BWT here in the first component of, of a pair. And the second component is just the index in the BWT. Okay, so index zero is an A, index one is an R, index two is a D, and so on. That's what I, what I work with. And now um, I sort these pairs lexicographically, if you want, again. I sort them first by the character, and I break ties by the second position. And that's the list we'll, we'll use for decoding. So there's another sorting step, uh, but it has to be a very specific one. As I explained, you have to sort by the characters first and then by the index in the BWT. That will mean always the first of these pairs has a dollar. And now we'll do the following steps. We'll use the second position like a next pointer in a linked list. We start with the dollar and we follow its next pointer. And whenever we enter a pair with the next pointer, we write out the character that we see in the first column, first position. So this one has an index three, so we jump to three and A is the first output. Then we take the uh, index from there and use it as an next pointer. So seven leads us to uh, this down here, puts a B out. And we go from there to 11, so we find an R, then 4 brings us to A, and so on and so forth. So you run through the text, always just taking this one as the next index to visit, and uh, magically, abracadabra, you end up with the original text. And you know when to stop because you've reached the first thing again, or you've reached the, the dollar symbol again, either works. Okay, I think the algorithm is very easy to follow. If I gave you this example and told you another time how to do this, or you, you have a look at this, you would be able to reproduce this by, by hand quite, quite easily. Uh, but it seems completely unclear why this is the right thing to do. So what we need to do this, if you analyze the running time, we need to sort. And we sort pairs, so that's two rounds of counting sort because uh, the first one is, is from an alphabet, so that's small integers. The second one is integers, that's all fine. So you can do, use this black box from unit three. But why, why is this uh, the right thing to do? Um, these are the steps we have to follow, but I want the example on the slide. The decoding works character by character. There's only one thing really to get started, and that's the dollar sign. That's only occurring once, so that's somehow easy to find. So in the BWT, we can find the dollar symbol. That's easy. Now, what is the first character in the text? It's whatever follows the dollar sign in the wraparound. So we would like to know if I'm in this position, how can I jump to the first character, the, the character in the first column of the same row? That's this. That's this first step. And for that, all we need is all the characters in sorted order. If we had a list of all the characters in the BWT in sorted order, then we can jump there because we're in position i. And so we just take the ith character in sorted order. OK. These are sorted. If I know an index, I can jump there. And in a, in a way, what we did in the algorithm is reproduce the sorted list of the characters. 
So that's step one. If I know a position, I can jump to the character in the first column. The second step is to continue. That gives me the first character, B. Now, how do I find where to continue? I have to use these, I have to somehow jump to the next character. And so what you can do here um, is illustrate it uh, one step later if you have all these A's. Remember, all A's appear here together because they're sorted. And if you follow where they come from, just from looking at which A in the word it is, they appear in the same order. They're the first, first, second, third, fourth, first, second, third, fourth. The relative order doesn't change. And that's a property of the BWT again, because you sorted these texts. If what comes here after this was earlier in the alphabet, uh, after the A, then after you cut away the A, ban is also before N, N, N. So ban is before N, N, N. So this A must come before all the other A's. Okay? So how do you exploit this? You find your B, and now you count the how many of B is this? It's not the first, it's the second B. And so you walk down your BWT, and you also find not the first, but the second B. So that's the next step. And then you do the same thing again. You jump into the first column using the index in the sorted list. And you find this is the fourth A. So you go to the fourth A in the BWT. And that's how you jump from left to right repeatedly and get one character out each time. All right. That's the BWT. So we've seen. Decoding is much easier, actually. It doesn't need fancy suffix sorting. It just needs counting sort and following these, these imaginary pointers. But both are overall uh, linear time if you just look at the theta class. It's typically a bit slower than other methods, but computers have become fast enough that it's very competitive. And if you, if you wait a millisecond for your zip file to email it to your friend, or you wait half a second, it doesn't matter much. It does need access to the entire text, so it, it can't be used in a streaming fashion, but you could apply it to blocks. That's um, a hack to go. Uh, the bzip2 algorithm, because I haven't pointed this out, it uses first the BWT, then move to front, then run length encoding, and then a Huffman code for what comes out of that. That's pretty much the, the compression method you've seen. And that's still um, among the best we have. There are more principled choices by now that actually get the same performance and are a bit cleaner to understand. I wish we had some more time to go through that, uh, but I think the module is full enough. And this session has been full enough. So yes, just um, the update of the comparison. These are the three compression methods we've had, and we added the two transforms. And uh, yeah, we'll leave it with that. There's still interesting things happening in compression. So a lot of what we touched on is, is still active research. So um, I like this topic a lot.